Welcome to Revival Time Hub, the fire shall ever be burning upon the altar, it shall never go out. Hallelujah. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Amen. Amazing. I'm happy to be in Kenya again. Thank you. Thank you, Kenya. Amen. Just just one moment i i need to respond to what um reverend julian just just showed us and taught us you know i sat quietly there uh, i must tell you reverend julian you are an incredible ambassador of the kingdom this is remarkable remarkable hallelujah this this for me was a definition of the wisdom of god at work in a man translating the faith life to a context that serves Jesus to a generation in a way that he will be received. Let's honor him one more time. Thank you. Incredible creativity, audacious projects. Hallelujah. I just feel stirred while we're standing, and, and forgive me, I hope that I do not break any protocol. I will honor everyone shortly, but I want us to sow a seed of prayer to this project. Is that all right? Can we do that as a people? Lift your voice wherever you are and speak over this economic project, the commonwealth, incredible creativity. Go ahead and pray. Pray for Reverend Julian and his team, the entire economic team. Pray for the partners that help to fund, the partners that help to advise. A believer is praying, Kenya pray. This is redeeming the destiny, the future of not only this nation, but this continent. Someone please pray. Let it be from the depth of your heart. Thank you, Father, for giving us a gift, a true apostle in the marketplace. Thank you because he's not frustrated the grace of God upon his life. Thank you for the spirit of creativity, the wisdom of the just at work in his life go ahead and declare over that project that it will spread like wildfire that the young people in kenya will have affordable housing excellent education business and commerce come on someone is praying sow that seed of prayer it is a definition of an apostolic mentality pray that God will replicate that grace across the length and the breadth of Kenya that many young people will rise kingdom cultured young men and women they will rise and begin to spearhead innovation across the tech world across education across agriculture it's time for the kingdoms of this world to become the kingdoms of our God and of his Christ. One more minute you are praying. Make that prayer investment. Pray over his health. Pray Eli who said there is a spirit in man and that the inspiration of the Almighty make it men of understanding. Make it men of understanding. It was said about Daniel in Babylon that an excellent spirit was found in him. Declare that none of these projects will die. The vision will not die. It says the Lord gave the word. Then it says great was the company of them that published it. We raise prophetic ambassadors across the length and the breadth of Kenya across East Africa, across Sub-Saharan Africa, who will spearhead this campaign in the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Father, we ask in the name of Jesus that you will empower your manservant. We pray that wisdom is multiplied upon him as touching this vision. 
we declare that it will not die in the name of jesus christ we declare that many other visions of this sort will rise even from this conference in the name of jesus christ shout a believing amen and please you may be seated reverend julian thank you so much it's an honor to be here i want to appreciate your spiritual father our father a father to us all baba thank you so much and his dear wife let's give them a big big god bless you amen and i want to honor all the men and the women of god here present my apologies may not be able to call you by name but i deeply honor you from the depth of my heart thank you so much the apostle from switzerland we met briefly whilst coming the lord honor you sir in the name of jesus christ hallelujah rima feast for me has become an apostolic convergence of like-minded believers it's beyond just a conference it's it's become an apostolic convergence and i like the way that it is not just limited to bringing spiritual information but is translating the wisdom that is captured in scripture to a context that makes the church relevant to society i've always been concerned about the applicability of the spiritual truths that we have and we know that kingdom truth must be translated to a context that is able to heal to build to deliver to raise and to establish if the truths that we know cannot translate to a better society a healthier society a more empowered society then there is no reason why the gospel should be advanced are we together now the bible says i am come john chapter 10 and verse 10 i am come that ye may have life and that you have it more abundantly more abundantly amplified says to its fullest and so we really honor great projects like this and i like the fact that it is being presented here at conferences like this that it's not some business conference somewhere because this is the business of kingdom hallelujah and it is everyone's concern this is the right atmosphere to sell this kind of idea by now you know that the goal is beyond profit there are better cheaper and wiser ways to make profit this is a passion like he said there is a cause a cause bigger than just an individual's profit and we salute you for your sacrifice for this nation and the body of christ one more time let's honor reverend julian thank you so much amen right so i'll go straight to my teaching i hoped that my session would be a prayer meeting uh in the name of jesus christ we're still going to pray but um the lord placed a few thoughts in my heart as touching the theme for the meeting when i got word about the theme i it touched me very much because the unity of faith and the unity of the body it's been one of my assignments and it's a passion for me i have studied a number of factors across this topic and i decided to pick a few things to discuss uh, as we pray for my session so let me plead that you lend me your attention hopefully it will be a brief session this morning or afternoon and then we we'll leave and get ready for the evening session are you ready tonight in one moment, I'd like you to cry for the spirit of understanding. Go ahead and pray. The spirit of understanding. Isaiah 11, the spirit of understanding. The spirit of understanding. The Bible says in all you're getting, get understanding. Someone is praying. Let it be from the depth of your heart. My heart is open, ready to be enlightened in the name of Jesus Christ amen i'll start this morning or afternoon by reiterating the fact that your excelling as a believer in this kingdom is dependent on the quality of light that you have access to please listen very carefully your excelling in this kingdom depends primarily on the kind and the quality of light light meaning spiritual illumination that you have access to 
In John chapter 1 and verse 5, the Bible says, And the light shineth in the darkness. It says, And the darkness comprehended it not. In fact, the Bible puts it this way in Genesis chapter 1. He says that God called the light day, and the darkness he called night. God called the light day. You may have heard me say this, that in God's economy, day is not when the sun rises, it's when light comes. So you can be in the afternoon and still be in the nighttime in darkness because of the bankruptcy of light. He called the light day and the darkness he called night. Remaphis therefore is beyond just a convergence to eat, to drink, to relate. It is primarily a feast of light. Hallelujah. Believer is access to the body of spiritual truth that puts you to a point of dominion in experience. The real inheritance of the believer is light. The Bible calls it marvelous light. Hallelujah. Are we learning now? And so we're going to be discussing very quickly one of the cancers and the body of Christ that has crippled our emerging, has crippled our becoming, has crippled our efficiency. And um, I believe that is one of the things that God intends to help to resolve even at Rima Fest 2024. I'm teaching very quickly on the spirit of envy. The spirit of envy. And I want you to please pay attention. God is bringing deliverance to the body of Christ. This is a message for the church in Kenya, the church in Africa, the church world over. The spirit of envy. James chapter 4, please. We'll read from verse 1 to 3. James chapter James chapter 4. Am I doing something wrong? Help me. All right. James chapter 4, 1 to 3. The Bible says, From whence cometh wars and fighting among you? Hallelujah. From whence cometh wars and fighting among you? James is dealing with a very serious issue here. Perhaps someone needs to help address this. Can you help me on that? He's dealing with conflicts. Are we together now? He's dealing with misunderstandings and all sorts of confusion within the organized body of believers. And he's saying, from whence come wars and fighting among you? He says, come they not tense, even of your lusts that were in your members. Reading to verse 3. It says, ye lost and have not. Ye kill and desire to have and cannot obtain. Ye fight and war, yet ye have not. And he says, because you have not. Verse 3. It says, ye ask and receive not, because you ask amiss that you may consume it upon your lust. James chapter 3 from verse 16. Two verses and then I'll begin to teach. James chapter 3 and verse 16. I wish we could read it in concert. Are you ready? As many who can see, let's read together. One, two, go. For where envying and strife is, there is confusion and every evil work. May the Lord bless his word in Jesus' name. The Bible tells us from Galatians chapter 5, 19 to 21, that envy is one of the works of the flesh. Paul, in dealing with the works of the flesh versus the works of the spirit, he lists envy, particularly when you go to verse 21 of Galatians 5, he talks about envyings as one of the manifestations of the works of the flesh. And Apostle James now began to buttress on that fact by telling us that there is an explanation as to disunity. There is an explanation as to envy. There is an explanation as to hatred alongside all of the confusions and the chaos, the anarchy 
that have trailed the body of Christ through the years and perhaps through the centuries. He's saying that when there is envy, it produces all kinds of confusion, all kinds of divisions, all kinds of problems. Let's define envy. I define envy here very quickly as a strong feeling. Listen and then write. A strong feeling of resentment, anger, bitterness, or hatred that is rooted in the desire to have the quality, the resources, the status, or the result belonging to or being experienced by someone. It's a long read. You listen. I will tell you the one to write. This is for your ears now. I'll take you one more time. That envy is a strong feeling of resentment, anger, bitterness, or hatred, and that all of the desire to have the quality, the resources, the status, or the results that belong to or are being experienced by someone other than you. Is God helping someone? Now for your writing. Envy is an emotion which occurs when a person lacks another's quality, skill, achievement, or possession. Emotion that occurs when you are aware of the fact that you lack another person's quality, another person's skill, another person's achievement, or possession. In fact, envy goes further to plant in you a desire to only find fulfillment when the other person loses those opportunities. Listen carefully. There's a surgery coming now. So a strong feeling of resentment, strong feeling of anger, bitterness, or hatred. Are we together so far? And we said that these negative emotions are rooted in the desire to have a quality resources status or results that belong to or are currently being experienced by someone other than you isn't it amazing that you would think because god is in the midst of his people they would not experience these kinds of things but this is a cancer that has destroyed people a cancer that is destroying so many and it's a major factor. It's impeded the unity of the church. It's impeded consistency in friendships. It's destroyed relationships, valuable destiny relationships. So you listen to this as a word of healing. God is bringing healing for some. God is bringing explanation for others. He's bringing deliverance for us all. You believe that? Shout a loud amen. Envy is a natural human response. Listen carefully. A natural human response in the presence of consistent results and achievements of others. It is a natural human response. That means that if you stand in the presence of an individual producing consistent results without you enjoying such a possibility that it is a natural human response this is where you need the holy spirit this is where you need to be spiritual are we together now it is a natural human response i'm reminded very quickly and i want to use this to give us three examples there are many examples of envy in the bible but do you know genesis chapter 4 please for reference the first recorded case of death in the bible did not come as a result of a demonic attack it came as a result of this cancer called envy the first recorded case of death in the bible genesis chapter 4 for sake of time let's begin from verse 5 the bible tells us that god had respect for the offering of Cain. In fact, back up to verse 2. Very important information there. The Bible says Abel was a keeper of sheep, but Cain was a tiller of the ground. 
do you see that immediately they, they were different? And that difference was supposed to be an advantage. Because we learn from agriculture, basic agriculture, that it is the cultivation of crops, the rearing of animals. And they were supposed to bring completion to themselves. But we see here that something happened, verse 5, for sake of time. Cain was very wroth. This was the first description of envy. And his countenance fell. Verse 6. The Bible says the Lord told him, Cain, I'm watching from heaven and I'm seeing envy growing within you. Why is that so? It says, verse 7, If you are done well, will you not be accepted? And if you do not do well, sin lieth at your door. Verse 8, for sake of time reading and we'll stop at 10. Cain talked with Abel, his brother. And it came to pass that they were in the field that Cain rose up against his brother and slew him. Envy never stops till destruction occurs. It starts with a desire, but it goes further to act out that desire until you cause pain, until you cause destruction to another person. Are you learning now? Verse 10. And he said, what hast thou done? Okay, well, God called unto him, Cain, where is your brother? And he said, am I my brother's keeper? And then verse 10, he says, The voice of thy brother's blood crieth from me onto the ground. And you know the story. So the first recorded instance of death as captured in scripture came on account of this cancer called envy. One more example. Genesis chapter 37, please. And we'll begin our reading from verse 3. The Bible speaks about the man Joseph joseph interesting story and israel jacob now loved joseph more than all his children because he was the son of his old age and the bible says the father gave him a coat of many colors i preached a message one time relating to this beware when you wear a coat of many colors When you are that gifted as to have various dimensions of the investment of the spirit upon your life, even your brothers can kill you. A coat was given to him by the father and that was the reason for his envy. Verse 4. The Bible says, when his brethren saw that the father loved him more than all his brethren, they hated him and could not speak peaceably unto him in the presence of envy reconciliation is impossible regardless what you come with what angle you present the facts the bible says they could not speak peaceably unto him verse 5 and joseph dreamed a dream to make matters worse notice the reason for the hatred one the love of the father then number two a dream And he told his brethren. And then the Bible says they hated him yet the more. Six. He said unto them, this is a dream that I've had. And when you read down to 11 for sake of time, the Bible says they hated him because of his dream. They hated him because of his dream. They hated him because of his dream. Right for reference. First Samuel chapter 18 from verse 6 and 9. 6 to 9. You read there about David and Saul. I'm showing you instances, examples of envy in the Bible. Isn't it amazing that the character of envy like you'll be learning is such that sometimes, no matter how great you are, envy does not seek to share success. It wants that you succeed alone. There was no reason why King Saul should be envious of David. He is king. And yet the Bible says that Saul literally wanted to kill David. David had to run for his life. You find that in Genesis 18, 6 to 9. What is the goal of envy? I hope we're learning now. What is the goal of envy? The goal of envy, listen carefully, is to fight the frustration and discomfort that is experienced in the presence of another person's achievement. To fight the frustration and the discomfort 
that is experienced in the presence of another person's achievement as a way of healing from the feeling of inferiority. Envy is a way or the goal of envy is to fight the frustration and discomfort that is experienced in the presence of another person's achievement as a way of healing from the feeling of inferiority that it brings. Can you imagine that? That when you find yourself in envy, it is a way of trying to manage the frustration. Are we together? To manage the discomfort that is experienced in the presence of another. So an example, please let me have two people, two gentlemen preferably, two gentlemen, come. One stand here, thank you, by my left, the others, please stand by my right. All of you watch this. So let's call this one brother A, let's call this one brother B. Are you ready? Now all of you, please give this gentleman a round of applause. Make sure your attention is on him. Keep clapping. You can stand if you want to, but keep clapping. Hold on. Now look up please. In this example, what do you think happens to this man? Because that applaud is happening in his presence and it does not seem to stop. Now you are standing on it. Are we together now? The natural response of this gentleman except walked upon by the Spirit of God is that regardless the reason, this man is going to be uncomfortable this result is too consistent. It's a different thing if you just tap your hand. It's manageable. But when it becomes consistent, it's too loud, it's too consistent, there is a basis for contrast. Envy begins to build. Try it one more time. Here we go. A round of applause. You see that? Now, you do this on Sunday, do it again on Monday, do it again on Tuesday, do it again in January, February, March, and I tell you, except God walks upon the heart of this, even if they are blood brothers, eventually, this cancer will catch up with this guy. It has nothing to do with being good or bad. It's a human reality that outside of the help of God can plague all men. Who is learning? So, this gentleman now begins to get uncomfortable. Why? Because you see, results create a basis for contrast. Results kill excuses. When an individual begins to produce consistent results, it takes away the excuse factor. You cannot say it's because I'm in Kenya again. You cannot say it's because I came from a, a dysfunctional family again. In the presence of consistent results, your own excuses die. Is someone learning now? Thank you, gentlemen. Now you clap for this one. Come on. Give him a real, a real round of applause. Are we together? Thank you, my friend. All right, so here you go. Blessings to you. Are we learning so far? So the goal of envy is to fight the frustration. Do you know that whenever you find people communicating envy, they are dealing with something within themselves. There is a frustration. Are we together now? There is a discomfort that happens to them in the presence of consistent results from the life of others. How do they fight this? Number one, most people fight envy by downplaying the achievements and the perceptions that people have on others. So if this gentleman is to fight this one, his first assignment will be to downplay the achievement, to water down the achievement and make it look like it's not worth clapping. Is this why you are clapping? The moment you find yourself in that position, you've been infected by this virus of envy. The moment you find yourself downplaying, demeaning, the achievements of others 
or the perception that people have towards another person's results no matter how you argue it it is caused by envy are we together so someone can look at this incredible presentation by pastor julian and say oh well i i think it can be better you see once you uh, it, it, it the moment you begin to hear those things i tell you it is produced you see envy can use anything a lie or the truth the goal is not to sell you truth the goal is to use that to water you down it's, it's like a system that tries to equalize Don't say tell them. It's a surgery. God is working on everyone. <laughs> Reverend Julian, you invited me to Kenya again. I hope this is a good start. <laughs> Downplaying the achievements of others, the character of envy. Downplaying the perception that people have on account of another person's result. So when someone says, this great man of God from Switzerland, he's doing a great work. Oh, have you been there? Do you know him? Once you begin to hear those things, an attack on people's results, why clap? Beware of those who do not clap. When God is lifting you, beware of those who have a problem clapping when God is announcing you. Do you have to honor the Father and the Lord? What is wrong? Does it affect you? You see, when people take your success too personal, you see, they don't have to be bad people. I hope I'm not describing you. But if I am, welcome to Rema Feast. You are the one that we praise. You are the one we adore. You give the healing and grace that our hearts always hunger for. Oh, our hearts always hunger for. Please sit down. Let me walk this for a few minutes. So envy walks by number one, attempting to downplay the achievements of others attempting to downplay the perception that people have over another person's results it is the character of envy number two how does envy operate by wishing for the fall or the destruction of the person experiencing the results so envy goes further to wish it becomes a secret desire can something happen to Reverend Julian that just makes it look like he's not that exceptional? Can something happen to this pastor? Can something happen to this person? You see that now? Do you know this was a situation with the Jesus and the scribes and the Pharisees? They so wanted him to die. They wanted him to die. To a point that they were willing to release an robber. Let's honor our father. I may not know him, but please give him the honor that he deserves. May God bless you, sir. Amen. Hallelujah. God bless you, sir. Thank you. Now, please, let me have your attention. What kind of anger over Jesus makes a people want to release back an robber? He's a version of what we would call a terrorist. They were willing to make do with Barabbas again. They said, just let Barabbas come down. Let him continue to kill our children. But for God's sake, let this man die. Get him out of the way. Don't chain him. Don't put him in prison. Kill him. Envy for you. Envy so desires the downfall of others as a therapy, as a way to heal when you hear that something happened, she just lost her child. You, you almost want to hide the joy. You first feel the joy, then you feel the pain. You listen to this. I will tell you the reason why the church does not seem to advance. Because if we do not conquer envy, 
we will keep killing the visions of one another using scriptural excuses killing the visions of one another rejoicing hugging in the open and then stabbing in the secret are we together We cannot attain unity as a people. We cannot advance as a people if we do not deal with envy. Now, please look at me. For most people, their journey towards receiving this cancer of envy starts from childhood. It doesn't matter if you're a preacher. Let me do psychology for two minutes. Forgive me. Most people do not know that there is a psychological explanation to envy. Envy is easily around a life that has suffered deprivation. When you have been deprived of opportunity, when you have been deprived of things, access, it is the natural response. You will hate any other person who is in that vantage position outside of you. Can, can you believe that this can happen between a husband and a wife? You will think marriage will solve the problem. No, sir. It can happen between siblings. It can happen between preachers. Or do I say this is what is happening among many people? Are we together now? So when you come from a background where you have been deprived. Now, just for your information, I know that most of you will know this. The highest psychological need of any man, whether a pastor, whether a businessman, the highest psychological need of any man, listen carefully, is the need to feel loved, the need to feel valued, and the need to feel appreciated or celebrated. You may want to write that down. That the highest psychological need of every man, including you, the highest psychological need of every man, any man at all, is the need to feel loved say loved come on shout it kenya say loved number two the need to feel valued and then the need to feel appreciated or celebrated the need to feel loved the need to feel valued the need to feel celebrated the highest psychological need of any man is not money why do you want the money as a means of achieving this why do you rejoice because you bought a better metal than another metal you call it a car why do you rejoice over metals do you love metals that much no sir now i'm not downplaying that why do you rejoice over sand that you constructed more beautiful than another is it really the house is it really the material no it is your pursuit to achieving this psychological need the need to feel loved the need to feel valued and the need to feel appreciated and look at me you become an enemy to anybody when you frustrate their achieving this psychological need you become an enemy to anyone at all if they learn whether by experience or by rumor or by instinct that you are standing the way of their feeling loved they are feeling valued or they are feeling appreciated you become their enemy immediately this is true for pastors with members or pastors among pastors this is true for business people are we together now the highest psychological need of any man is the need to feel loved the need to feel valued the need to feel appreciated now most believers do not know that when you come into Christ the work of renewal does not happen instantaneously and so we think because we're born again automatically all of these fleshly tendencies leave so you are surprised that envy can cohabit with the anointing you can be anointed you can be great you can be a businessman you can be vibrant spiritually and yet find this cancer still growing Medical science has taught us that it's possible for a baby to be growing and there's a fibroid there growing too. And both of them will compete to grow. Am I right on that? That the old man can be growing and the new man can be growing there too. 
Paul did not hide his frustration in Romans chapter 8. He said, the things that I desire to do, I do not find myself doing them. Even as an apostle, the things that I do not want to do, I find myself doing them. He says, with my spirit, I serve the Lord, but in my flesh, I see another law walking in my members. He was so frustrated. He said, oh, wretched man that I am, who shall deliver me from this body of death? Paul for you. Paul did not hide his frustrations. He said, listen, although you consider me to be an apostle, there is still a war that happens within my members. And God is dealing with one of such. You will be surprised that when you get rid of envy, you will taste of true freedom. The bondage that envy brings, I'm not sure many of its victims are aware of the extent of bondage they're in living in envy and i'm praying for someone already in the name of jesus this spirit of envy this cancer of envy that has that has robbed preachers has robbed businessmen of their prophetic destiny in this conference here at rima feast 2024 let it die permanently shout a believers amen let it die permanently in the name of jesus christ you give the healing and grace that our hearts always hunger for. Oh, our hearts always. Listen and write. Envy is not always about wanting to be the best. It is most times wanting to be the only. Envy it's not always about wanting to be the best. It is about wanting to be the only. One time the disciples of Jesus, whilst he was mentoring them, they did not even know that envy was growing in their own hearts. They heard that the mother of James and John, remember the story? That she came to negotiate a position for them in advance. And she used that privilege as a mother to say, Jesus... When you are done with Caesar, when you are done with Herod, when you are done with all of this, please grant my sons an opportunity to sit at your left and your right. The Bible says when the other disciples heard it, you could imagine the anger in the camp. So you think we're here for nothing? I can imagine Peter saying, you think I left fishing for nothing? I wasn't doing bad after all. They all had their various agenda. They hid it and kept quiet. You see, envy can be quiet for many years. You will think you are free till someone comes with a result that is notable, that is consistent, and there it comes again. Are we learning? Envy is not always about wanting to be the best. It is many times about wanting to be the only. And with all due respect, this is not a pastor's conference, but let me charge co-laborers in the gospel. This is one area that every preacher must fight in righteousness. It will not go by default, no matter how anointed you are. You have to become comfortable knowing that you are not the only one God called. I'm going to say it again. You have to become comfortable knowing that you are not the only one God called. I know your call was so spectacular, but it was not only you he called. The spirit of envy never finds comfort, even if the whole body is doing well. It prides in marching on others until you stand alone. Not knowing that in the kingdom, being alone is dangerous. Are we together now? Being alone is dangerous. The Bible says it is not good for man to be alone. He was not just speaking in terms of marriage. He's saying it's a risk when you are alone. In business, in a sector, when you are alone, that, that, that sharing together that shields you. It is the reason why every man of God must seek to replicate himself. Your safety is in reproducing yourself. When you are alone, you become an endangered species. When the devil strikes you, 
a whole generation can perish because of the pride of one person. So he told Moses, he said, Moses, you are about to die. Pour your spirit upon others. Find rest so that they can ease this labor for you. Even Jesus himself replicated himself and asked the people, he said they should continue doing that. Envy does not find fulfillment in being the best or the greatest. It goes further to want to be alone. You must be comfortable knowing that no matter how spectacular your calling, your election, your assignment is, that you are not alone. One time, the disciples heard that there were other people casting out demons. Is it in your Bible? They were not part of the camp. And they said, Jesus, we need to do something about this. Our relevance is being threatened here. I thought we were the only ones. How could there be someone who does not honor Jesus? And yet I'm hearing that some things, can we call down fire? Let's end this in a hurry. And Jesus looked at them and said, the fact that you can think like this, you are not, I mean, who should be sad if you are with Jesus? That to me seems to be the highest honor everyone can have. That Jesus called you to be with him. And even in the presence of Jesus, people were still not comfortable. Most times people say, Jesus, just give me Jesus and I'm fine. But now you have him and you are still not fine. Are we learning? The disciples were with Jesus. Can you imagine? The word incarnate. And they heard that some fellows were trying to heal and all of that. They would have looked on them with compassion and said, My God, I wish Jesus would call these people, even if they are using whatever power. They said, Let's call down fire so that we end this. We have to be the ones doing this alone. Every time you think you are the only one doing what you are doing, you are already under the attack of delusion. Ah, there are many other sons. There are many other champions. There are many other warriors. Are we together? Do not make the mistake of Elijah. Elijah said, I am the only one. He said, ah, 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 ah. You are a great prophet, but here you are missing it. Run away from that feeling that makes you believe you are the only one God is using. No, no matter how spectacular. Reverend Julian. You invited me. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> ah, don't worry, I'll, I'll end by giving you the cure. So don't, don't, um, I'm a good doctor. There's a cure. There's both a vaccine and a treatment. Are we together now? But now I hope you are not just laughing. We're dealing with serious issues here. That a man can be anointed, a man can be wealthy, Herod heard, look up please, Herod heard that a king was born somewhere. He said, find that king. I want to kill that baby, that the baby will not even see the light of day. Question. I mean, isn't it embarrassing to come to the palace and meet the king worried? And he said, king, what was the issue? I mean, is there war brewing up somewhere? And he says, a little child. I heard that there's prophecy over that little child and I'm concerned about my place. Look at the age gap. The age gap is enough comfort to know that most likely by the time this child becomes an adult, he will be dead. And yet envy can make an intelligent person be that dull to reduce yourself and pursue mundane things. A king threatened by a baby who is not even aware he's there. Is someone learning? I wish I would tell you that this does not exist among preachers, but it does. I wish I would tell you that this does not exist among business people, but it does. I wish I would tell you that this does not exist among brethren in church, it does. So here comes a powerful testimony. And while others are crying, someone is in anger. So the triplets finally came. And you are saying, how bedeviled can you be that while others are crying and say, we rejoice for this woman, someone else, I can tell you it's a painful thing, but not everybody claps. 
when you are lifted. Mm. There are people, your arrival brings an end to their dispensation. They will fight it. John the Baptist, who called Jesus to ministry and ordained him. Jesus himself submitted to John and the Bible acknowledged that John was the greatest of the prophets. Let me show you what envy can do. It can spill over to offense of all sorts. When John was done, he said it beautifully so that I must decrease, that he will increase. John would have left in honor. I do not believe he would have ended the way he ended. But in anger, envy. Now Jesus, some of his disciples had left and they had gone to Jesus, remember? And John had so deteriorated, he got to a point where he began to discuss other issues and he found himself in prison. Watch this. John sent his disciples to go to the same Jesus he ordained and said, are you the Messiah? Come on, John. Look what envy degenerated to offense. Are you the Messiah? John, who said, behold the Lamb of God. John, who baptized Jesus, is now asking, are you the Messiah? Even the scribes and the Pharisees had come to terms with the fact that he was the Messiah. Nicodemus came by night and said, we know that thou art a preacher sent from God. Don't mind what we do in the day, we already know. And here is John saying, are you the Messiah? Or should we expect another? The language of envy, the language of offense. Watch Jesus. Jesus did not answer. He healed the sick and did all this. He said, go back. Tell John what you have seen. And then he said, blessed is he who is not offended in me. That's my answer to John. Go back and tell John, offense is about to destroy you. It's a prayer that I've prayed for myself. It's a prayer that I've prayed for everyone I love. That you will shield yourself by revelation from this cancer of envy. It can turn a good man of God to look like a beast. It can turn a good businessman to look. It brings, it's a depleter of anything. Add envy to anything and it reduces you to ashes. There are people in Kenya, this is their singular problem. There are people in Nigeria, there are people in South Africa, there are people all over Africa. They literally cannot sleep because the news of what God is doing in the life of others is such a torture to them. They lose sleep. They live on drugs. You mean this man has purchased this property again? Ah, what do we do? Someone killed. Can't there be a scandal around this life? Something that comforts me that this person is not that spectacular. They look forward to a news. Is there something? Can, can you find something? The character of envy. This businessman cannot be that spectacular. No, I'm sure he's doing something. This man of God cannot be that spectacular. I'm sure there's something. And because they are humans, you will find an I that was not dotted eventually or a T that was not crossed. Now, envy capitalizes on anything. And good news for envy when it does find something. And it will find because you are dealing with the world of men. So you find people overflogging simple matters is because envy is what is flogging it. Did you hear what I said? Overflogging simple matters. So the secretary forgot the file. Truly, he forgot the file. But why are you still discussing the issue after one month? Ah, it's not the issue of file. You just found the file issue as a scapegoat to help you vent out envy. Are we together now? Yes. Okay, the man of God quoted Genesis instead of John. Is that the reason? Did it alter your receiving Jesus? Did it alter salvation? Is it really the scripture? No, sir. Oh, Reverend Julian put a wrong account number. He missed it by one. Oh, okay, so you correct it. No, something must. I mean, how could he miss that one? Is it really the account number? Envy hides in anything, especially truth. Because truth can also be used by evil. 
The Bible says Judas, even though this was not a case of envy, Judas saw a woman break her alabaster box in front of Jesus and he rode through the wings of compassion to say, no, 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 no. This is a waste. That was greed speaking. But he spoke through empathy. He said, um, the money would have been gathered. Then he remembers and given to the poor. And the Bible says, no, it's not because he loved the poor. It's because he was a thief. So a thief can speak as a philanthropist. And yet he's a thief. An envious person can speak as a counselor. Yet it is not counseling. He's not interested in your growth. He's venting out something. Are we together? Every time you find envy, it overflogs simple issues. The goal is not correction. The goal is to reveal flaws. The goal of envy is to reveal flaws. And the point is to try to downplay, to demean anything that looks spectacular so that it will find rest. I'm saying this to us because subconsciously, many of us have found ourselves, I know some of you are laughing, but I'm honestly describing you in the name of honesty. You know it's just that I didn't put your name in this story. But I'm really talking about you. Now, I, don't feel bad. This is Rima face. I came in the spirit of love. Are we together? They hated him because of his father's love. They hated him because of his dream. They hated him because of his coat. Three things that will make men hate you. The love of your father. Hmm. No, you are not the only one who God loves. Unfortunately, I'm not aware of what is happening between you and him. But I can only talk for myself. They hated him because of his father's love. They hated him because of his dream. The vision he was carrying. And yet the Bible says all men have the ability to see visions and to dream dreams. And they hated him because a coat was given to him. You can't be a preacher and a businessman, a counselor and a diplomat is too much for one person. A coat of many colors. If you have one color, it's all right. But many colors is too spectacular. How do you see many colors and deny it? I'm looking at lovely women wearing all kinds of things. Many colors, you know. And you see there's red, there's all kinds of things like the rainbow all there. Many colors. So are you a man of God or you're a businessman? How do you excel in every area? It's not my fault. My father gave me a coat. Many colors. And you can be hated for that. I hear you're a counselor. I hear you're a businessman. I hear you're a diplomat, I hear, and you're excelling in all areas, juggling them with efficiency. The Bible says, whatsoever he doeth prospers. Who is God speaking to? Now, we're going to pray for one minute, and then I will show you the biblical cure to envy. God is going to be healing us here. Are you ready? Lift your voice and pray in one minute. Walk upon my heart. Walk upon my heart. Someone pray. A man of God pray. Someone desperate for growth, pray. Walk upon my heart. Let the spirit of envy give way. Some of you have recognized it in all honesty. You have seen that it's there. It's been there for years. It's time to get it out of your life. It's time to step into a greater level of spiritual efficiency. Are you praying? Walk upon my heart. Please be seated. We have to pray. The cure for envy. I wanted to start on a simple note this morning. The cure for envy. We'll pray for the sick in the evening. We all need healing this morning. 
And that healing is not just the healing of your body. Because a broken spirit can dry up the bones. You can have a problem that is spiritual and it will tell on your health. Hallelujah. I want to give you by scripture the cure for envy and I give you a guarantee as touching the integrity of God's word that anyone who will engage this you will be free from envy. Is God helping us? The unity that only comes through Christ. Number one. The first cure for envy is to recognize and embrace your uniqueness. Recognize and embrace your uniqueness and see your uniqueness as a blessing. Recognize and embrace your uniqueness and then see your uniqueness as a blessing recognize and embrace your uniqueness apostle i wish i was that articulate and intelligent like reverend julian don't admire what may not work in your life focus on something god has given you and you'll find out that you are equally maybe not equally in all fairness but you are uniquely i think that's a, a better expression you are uniquely valuable hallelujah Key number one, the cure to envy. Recognize and embrace your uniqueness. And see your uniqueness as a blessing. Someone shout it to the hearing of the devil. Say, I am a blessing. Don't mind how you feel. Say it again. Say, I am a blessing. This is a healthy indoctrination that you need. Else you will not be able to survive in today's world. Pastor, you are a blessing. Don't tell me how many members you have. While you trust God for growth, recognize that even in that place, that church, you may not be the individual that people seem to be seeking around, but know this, that I'm a blessing. I'm not a burden to my world. I'm not a curse to my world. Someone shout it again, say, I'm a blessing. Genesis chapter 4, we read that earlier on verse 2. The Bible says that Abel was a keeper of sheep, but Cain was a tiller of the ground. A tiller of the ground. A tiller of the ground. You may not have the, the privilege of being called into the apostolic or the prophetic ministry, but see yourself as a counselor with nobility. Do not see yourself less. And sometimes, as ministers of the gospel, we need to be careful the way we downplay and demean other functionaries within the body. There is a way you, it's, it's the same way with all due respect, sometimes politicians sell certain offices. It makes certain offices look too, they over, uh, they exaggerate certain things and they make people not comfortable where they are. They want to desire certain things and they begin to fight and kill for it. By the time you give an impression that if you are not an apostle or a prophet or a pastor, I don't know what you are doing in the kingdom of God. Now, you see, that, that, that idea already categorizes certain people and it puts them in certain uncomfortable positions. So, ministers of the gospel, we owe it to ourselves to appreciate the diversity within the body and to do it vocally so. Especially when you are in a position by the mercy of God where the nations can celebrate you. You would be in the best position to recognize and acknowledge others. Because now you are leveraging on that influence to make others feel good. Don't make people feel uncomfortable because you have arrived. No. In this place right now, watch this. There are media people all across this beautiful place. Are we together? Whilst I am preaching, they are aiding your understanding. If I mention a scripture with skill and intelligence, as anointed as you think I am, put me behind that laptop and see how I mess up your viewing experience. <laughs> see that? And it would be foolish of me to not acknowledge the presence of such people. 
when I came in, I heard worship going on and there were lovely people dancing. I mean, look the beauty in this place. Someone's creativity is the reason why we are comfortable here. Do you know that individual is as important as the preacher who is preaching? Say, I am a blessing. One more time, say it again. I am a blessing. Apostle, I may never have the opportunity to hold the mic at Rima Fest, but do not downplay your contribution. It is why some of us were able, I took a, a nice, uh, you know, glass of water somewhere. I was well taken care of in the green room. How do you downplay that creativity? They arrived here before me. They dressed up the place before my arrival. So you do not acknowledge the grace of God upon my life at the expense of their own relevance. I'm only in Kenya for two days and I return back. How about the pastors that labor over the people who are now here represented? How do you downplay them because you believe an anointed man of God just came? It would be foolish for me to believe that I can downplay all the pastors, the prophets, the intercessors, the prayer groups. You see that? When God gives you a position of honor, a position of grace, I mean some gentlemen, I think there are some Ugandas, where are they? Those my lovely guys. Now they did something. They made a beautiful portrait. They found everyone, you know, people who had imparted upon my life and then they put their own portraits too. They made one for me and one for Reverend Julian. As soon as I arrived, I was just trying to catch my breath and this gentleman came. That is uniqueness there. Ask me to draw you and see what I will produce. Walk up to 10 people and speak from the depth of their heart. Say you are a blessing and I need your blessing. Go ahead. You are a blessing. I need that blessing that is upon your life. Don't tell me what is not working in your ministry. Man of God, you are a blessing. I know you listen to my messages, but you are a blessing. Come on now. Appreciate the unique expression of God's grace. As a diplomat, you are a blessing. The cure to envy. God bless you. Now you return to your seat. Give Jesus a loud shout of praise. Hallelujah. Are we together? God bless you. Now look up please. Look how healing that sounds. Even what you just did now. Do you know you just delivered someone? So I'm this valuable. I pray for you. You pray for me. I love you. I need you to suffer. I won't harm you with words from my mouth. Hold on. I hope you meant that line of the song. Because some of you have torn others in pieces. You've used your mouth to tear businesses, tear churches down. May this be a repentance service for you. Listen, members too have to be careful. They are the ones who join the heads of pastors together. Saul killed 2,000. David killed 10,000. Oh dear, Saul. And Saul says, where is David? Let me kill him. The women cause that trouble. Now, now, women, I love you. I'm, I mean the women in the Bible. <laughs> Are we together? They began to sing, honestly celebrating a valiant man. And they said, Saul killed how many thousand? One thousand. Now David has killed ten thousand. And the news got to Saul. Ah. So, I think we need to kill this man. Listen, we must be careful even how we express the things that we call testimony in church. With all due respect, and I don't mean to bruise your ego, it's too early, I'm just arriving. But, 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 help me round up on time. But, just, let me just have your attention. Don't come and give a testimony like we were 10 in a bus from different churches. Then there was an accident and I was the only survivor and it is because of the prophetic word Joshua Selman gave over my life. That may be a sincere testimony, but these are the kinds of trouble we cause. Kenya, 
help men of God love one another. Are we together? Don't go around downplaying the investment of God's grace upon another preacher as a way of demonstrating the excellency of another person's work. No, don't do that. Remember, we're still dealing with the commonwealth thing. Within the fold, everyone wins, even when one wins. Did you hear what I said? Within the fold, everyone wins, even when one wins. I can share in the victory of Reverend Julian, even though I have no business with what I saw there. But it becomes my business because he's my brother. And if you have a problem with that, then uh, talk to our father. I think he's the, the person, the best person in that position. So I can celebrate what he's doing genuinely, not pretentiously, genuinely. Are we together now? You are a blessing. I told myself this. Right from before God lifted me, Genesis 12 and verse 3, in thee. I'm speaking here to a man of God who is always angry when he sees another man of God with greater grace. Find comfort. You are equally valuable. There is a space for you in God's program. Are we together? The reason why you do not find a whale in an aquarium is because there's no space for the whale there. If the whale is a whale indeed, go to the ocean. Leave the aquarium peacefully and let the fishes that have the size enough for the aquarium. A whale does not beautify a house unfortunately so don't say you are too small you are just exact for the beauty of a room <laughs> who is God speaking to hmm. apostle I just have five members and uh, I don't know why I, I can't become like so, so and so well if you can build those five members to be the five billionaires the five apostles, the five prophets in Kenya, you would have become the most successful man of God known in history. It's amazing how that we look away from all that God has done in our lives and we begin to admire others to a point of envy, jealousy, offense, then hatred. Admire and celebrate graces and gifts, but not at the detriment of your own investment. For one last time, say, I am a blessing. Amen. Yes, sir. A blessing. The one who drove me. Those of you who, dri who, who drive me every time I come here, you notice I always tell you thank you. It's a culture. No matter how many times they drive me here, taking me back, I say thank you. Why? Because anyone who can do for you what you cannot do for yourself, owe them thanks within that field. There are many birds in the body of Christ trying to swim. There are many fishes loving trees, wanting to be on trees. No. When you use fishing to rate a bird, it will remain a failure forever. There are birds that can touch the sea briefly to pick fish, but they are not meant for the sea. Stay in your area of grace and find comfort there. I preached a message a few months ago called Rise Up and Walk. And it was a message to empower a generation. The miracle that happened at Gate Beautiful was only the final phase of the miracle. The real miracle was that the Bible says certain people carried the crippled man every day and returned him back. They were nameless, but they were the reasons why the apostle could see him. They carried him every day. Every day. The second miracle was that the man agreed to be carried. There are people who are crippled, but they will never agree to be carried where they will be healed. Rise up and walk. Number two, God is healing someone right now from envy. What is the second key? The second cure to envy gratitude first Thessalonians 5 16 to 18 gratitude 
Gratitude immunes you. It immunes you from the spirit of envy. Gratitude. Give it to us, please. First Thessalonians 5 and verse 16. Rejoice evermore, it says. Pray without ceasing. Then it says, in everything, give thanks. For this is the will of God. Your condition may not be the will of God, but the attitude of thanksgiving in all conditions is the will of God. Can I tell you the truth? Everything you thank God for grows and it multiplies. And your appreciation of it also multiplies. Philemon chapter 1 and verse 6. Here's what the Bible says. That the communication of your faith might become effectual through the acknowledging of every good thing that is in you in Christ. I like that. The acknowledging of every good thing that is in you in Christ. God gave you beauty. Don't shy away from it. Thank you, Jesus. And if you think that's not a great gift, pray that God takes it away. Then you see how many things will be left. Are we together? God gave you intelligence that the communication of your faith becomes effectual. Lord, you gave me intelligence. I thank you for it. You gave me acumen for leadership. Thank you. You've made me a pastor so desired by many people. Thank you. You've made me a businessman. You've given me ideas. In the night, ideas come. And I've been able to build several businesses. Someone shout it from your spirit through your mouth. Say, thank you, Jesus. Amen. One more time. Say, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Yes. Thank him for all that he's done. Thank him for his faithfulness. When you get up in the morning, look yourself at the mirror and say, thank you. I'm wonderfully and fearfully made. I'm a testament of God's love. He's loved me with an everlasting love and with his loving kindness, he's drawn me to himself. Lord, thank you for giving me this ministry. Thank you for giving me these children still struggling with the third born. He's still stubborn, but I, I thank you that he's alive. Thank you that he's in a house where um, he can be changed. Thank God for what he's done in your life. It is difficult to be thankful and to complain. It is difficult to thank God and be envious. Lord, you gave me this. You gave me that. The story, the parable of the talent is very instructive. I don't know why God gave the man two rather than five. The Bible says according to their several abilities. But do you know the same commendation the man with ten got, the man with two also got. I used to think that there was no difference until I learned that the conditions that surrounded that, the temptations that came to all three was different. The man with five had the temptation of pride and complacency. He had the greatest talent. He overcame that to multiply it. The man with two had the temptation of envy, knowing he was second place. But he still overcame and most likely was mentored by the man who had five. To have replicated the same result. The man who had won. You see that it was mercy that even brought that one. Because the end of the story justifies that he did not deserve more. Thanksgiving. Father, thank you for my life. Thank you for breath. Thank you for health. Thank you for grace. I'm telling you sincerely, this is how I live. I am grateful, not just because I am me. Well, I'm grateful for being me, but I mean, I'm just grateful for being a child of God. Behold, what manner of love the Father has bestowed upon us. See that? Grateful to be me. Every opportunity, I don't downplay opportunities. I make every dealing of God in my life a special moment. I don't act as if he would have been without God. No, I'm very vocal. Lord, look what you've done in my life. When I'm back from every service, including this one, I will go down my knees and say, thank you. Your boy has come to say thank you. That mercy, again, your mercy and your grace. Yes, sir. I mean it. I mean it. It's not because I'm standing on stage here. Hallelujah. I had the honor this year to be invited for a lecture at Harvard University. And um, it was a very humbling time not to preach to deliver a lecture, it's a great honor. It's a different thing if a church calls you to speak. But when an academic institution, one of the most prestigious by any standard, that they call you as a preacher, 
I'm not an academician. I don't consider myself one. I'm passionate about knowledge. But to invite you, an institution will not risk their reputation on sentiments. And so I remember getting down my knees. I said, Father, thank you. If it ever happens good in my life, you are the reason. And I say, thank you. Someone needs to say, thank you, Jesus. That every time you slot in your ATM and something comes out, say, thank you, Jesus. The Bible said, trust in the Lord with all your heart. Proverbs chapter 3 and verse 5. And lean not unto your own understanding. It says, in all your ways, acknowledge him and he shall direct your path. Verse 7 says, be not wise in your own eyes. It says, fear the Lord and depart from evil. If God is giving you victory in ministry, always say thank you, Jesus. Don't just say it in the secret. Say it in the open. When you can thank God for your life, you can thank others for their contribution to your life. Say thank you, Jesus. So number one, appreciate your uniqueness. See your uniqueness as a blessing, as an advantage. Embrace your uniqueness. Number two, gratitude. Number three, are you ready? The cure for envy, number three, very quickly, is content for growth and increase in capacity. The cure for envy, contend for growth and increase in capacity. For as long as you are small and you remain small, you will not be free from envy. Contend for growth. Galatians 4 and verse 1. An heir, he says, for as long as that heir is a child, he says he differeth nothing from a slave even though he be Lord of all. That means it is your inheritance in Christ. Oh yes. Inheritance. I can spend the whole day talking about that. Inheritance. That the inheritance that a believer has is not unique to any one believer. The inheritance that the saints have in light is generic. Access to grace. Access to wisdom access to the Holy Spirit, access to the resources of the world, and that you can use this as tools to create a great destiny. The Bible says the same Lord is rich unto all. The same Lord is rich. He does not show favoritism. God does not have grandsons. He has sons. Sons. Behold what manner of love the Father has bestowed upon us, that we should be called the sons of God. The Bible says, now are we the sons of God. And it doth not yet appear what we shall be like. But the Bible says, um, that's Romans chapter 8 from verse 18. It says, I reckon that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory that shall be revealed in us. Verse 19 says, for the earnest expectation of the creature awaited the manifestation not of one son, not of one unique son, not one apostolic son, not one prophetic son, the sons of God. That means there is a place for you. That table of greatness has a place for you. But it will happen by growth and capacity. Growth and capacity. Please look up. There are many people who are victims of envy today. Because there are many requests. I was teaching my people. And I told them many things we call prayer requests. Were supposed to come to your life naturally through growth growth can deflate a man's prayer request many of the things that we say God bring to my life were designed to come through growth if the vessel is small it makes the oil look small the oil is never small but it assumes the shape of the container carrying it you see that now we can all be great. We should all be great. It's in our corporate destiny as believers. Let me repeat that again. Choosing my words carefully. It's in our corporate destiny as believers to all be great. Literally be great. In business, in ministry, in politics and governance, in leadership, in every endeavor in life. It's our corporate destiny. 
But there's no potential for glory to anyone who does not contend for growth. Contend for growth. Luke chapter 2 and verse 52. And Jesus increased, increased, increased in wisdom. Your Jesus increased in favor. He increased in stature and in favor with God and with men. With God and with men. Someone say, I will grow. Shout it, say, I will grow. Say it again, say, I will grow. First Corinthians chapter 3 and verse 2. Man of God, you can grow. You can become a greater version of yourself. Businessman, there's no point envying another person. There's space for you. You don't find, you hardly find two aircrafts crashing in the sky. The space is too wide. No matter what, Boeing, whatever it is, once you only find traffic on ground, once you lift to the sky, there's enough space. Enough space. I have fed you with milk and not with meat. Why? For hitherto you were not able to bear it, neither are ye now able. There are many of you God wants to do much in your life. As a man of God, it's in your corporate destiny. There are certain anointings that come to your life, but they were authorized to come to a certain version of you. That anointing has not found the version it is looking for, so it keeps going back. It will have to wait until you grow. Apostle God told me he's going to be trusting me with 10,000 members, 20,000, 50,000. No, this version of you will be a destruction and a casualty if God should sell you like that to the nations. No, God is also a businessman. He doesn't sell bad products. He can work on it. He's called a porter. So if the clay is not well done, he smashes it and builds it again. And he does that for his name's sake. Namesake means his logo is on you and he protects his image. God does not deliver a bad job. No. When you see a Louis Vuitton or a Gucci or whatever it is and you look at it and that shoe, you see something that you just know that someone, someone has brought in a fake product. Because even though the right logo is there, there are, there are certain indices you have to find, the detailing, and when it is missing, that's how God is. So when you are bankrupt of character, bankrupt of this, God says, no, put in an anointing on this kind of person now. i rather walk on the person. So while you are fasting for power, what God will be walking on his character first. And you're saying, Lord, is it that you can't bring, just bring the anointing? We'll deal with character later on. God says, no, I don't walk like that. Hallelujah. Growth and capacity. Reverend Julian did not start this way. I've had the honor of attending the Rima Fest for a few years, and I've seen the growth and progression. Do you know, when you grow, everything grows. Stop trying to get everything to grow. Just grow. When you grow, everything will rise to match your growth. Don't try to change friends when you've not grown. And everybody, you draw people who are in your future. Your future self should be the one relating with them. Just because you save their numbers does not mean they are in your realm. No. Try to call them. They won't answer you. It's a message. Imagine, I hope you are not insulted. Are we together? It's good to grow. It's like someone, with all due respect, and not to insult you, it's like someone who buys the latest SUV that came out this year and you find the person with a gallon hoping to look for fuel and put inside. You are not there. Because when you grow, all the things that support that level also grow with you. Relationships, resources, access. This is one way you measure authentic growth. When you become wealthy by stealing, they will, the equation does not balance. Something else will not grow that should support that. If you are just looking for an experience to challenge yourself, that's fine. But I mean, if you want to exist in a realm, no. There are some things you should preserve your honor and live until you grow. So sometimes when God hides you, it's his way of meting out mercy. So that it, it matters how 
you are sold to the world. I, I hate to use that word, but I hope you, un you understand what I mean. When you sell a product, you are causing people to desire that product. And you have to, because impression matters. Impression matters. So God wants to fix you, to work on you, adorn you, and then tell the world, this is what I can do with people who are yielded. And in one moment, you become a voice of healing. You become a voice of grace. So stop coveting certain things in anger and envy. It is already in your destiny. Just grow to the version that would have that. Apostle, I'm trusting God to be able to host a meeting like this by myself. Okay? Um... Let me speak as a consultant. So show me, let me see. I can tell you without prophesying. I can tell you whether you are wasting your time or whether it will come to pass. Show me the capacity, the network. Are we together? Do you know how to negotiate for these kinds of things? Do you know the factors that need to be in place for such an event to hold? I don't think I'm not interested. Then you will not have it. And the greatest way to step into a destiny you desire is to appreciate the one that now models for you what you desire while learning from it. That's why I celebrate and respect all the pastors who have left their busy schedules to come for Rima Fest to be inspired and to learn. Two things. To be inspired and to learn. If you see a level of excellence here beyond what you know, don't assume you've always known it. No, your results show you don't know it. So learn. Learn with humility. When I sit here, I learn. I learn. I'm passionate about knowing what else is not working in my life. Don't be embarrassed. Learn. Learn. Why do I invite people and they don't come? Learn. The, the labor of the foolish weary at every one of them because he knoweth not how to get to the city. There is a way to influence. There is a way to power. There is a way to access resources. How did Pastor Julian coordinate favor from all of these parastatals, these businesses that are in partnership with him? He was not born that way. Men define their possibilities through growth. They define their possibilities through growth. Businessman, Thank God for what you have done. But if you remain small and you don't grow, you will envy everybody. Man of God, thank God for where you are. But do you know there are greater, there are still virgin dimensions in the spirit. Contend for growth. And the way you do it is by coming for events like this to expose you to what God can do with a yielded vessel. You go back provoked unto godliness. Not from a standpoint of jealousy. Lord, the same Lord is rich unto all. Let me carry this fire to my nation too. Let me carry this fire too. I remember many years ago, I used to watch Reinhard Bonke. Please sit down for a moment. I used to watch Reinhard Bonke. I attended his crusades. I mean, I saw tens of thousands of people. Very unassuming personality. And worst off, he would come and preach a very simple message. Annoyingly simple sometimes. And you know, when you have an investment of God's grace, the spirit of revelation, it comes with pride too. So sometimes you just to shelve those things. If it's not working in your life, it is not there, period. You've heard my story. I think I've shared it many times in Kenya. That in one of the events, pastor, I, I, I came early because I desired that grace. No room for envy. Who is ahead of you is ahead of you. Period. Don't argue and waste time and explain away. You are, you, are, you are worsening the pain. Are we together? I remember I went for the crusade ground, to the crusade ground with, with hunger. And I saw them wheeling people. And I said, please let me participate. And they said, well, you are not part of the committee. I said, I travel a long distance here. Committee or no committee. I have to serve this grace. I held onto the wheelchair. God is my witness. I was wheeling them to the front. And I said, Lord, this is how it will also be in my meetings. No room for envy. Wouldn't it be stupid for you to hear that I'm envying Renard Bonke? Isn't it not laughable and childish? No. Who is ahead of you is ahead of you. Just find comfort. 
and teach yourself that they were ahead of you so that they will guide you to get there too are we together when I was watching Pastor Julian as he was just churning out these strategies, I said, my God, you see, this grace bar, if it's not on your head, it's not there. I'm telling you, I'm telling you. Daniel chapter 2, it says, then the secret was revealed unto Daniel. If, if it's not, you can crack your brain and read books, but once it doesn't come, it's not there. But when it comes, it shows. I'm praying for you, that which is meant for you. Because you have come here to contend for growth in the course of this conference. May the mantle for the new, the grace for a higher dimension, may it rest upon you. In the name of Jesus Christ. When I came in here and I saw our father in the Lord, I was so happy to see him. And we just exchanged pleasantries and I was eager to ask him questions. You see, this was a man that most likely when I was born or when I was a child, he was already interpreting at the crusades of Maurice Arulo here in Kenya. How do you now come to compare yourself? Because of crowd or travels? It is the foolishness of the younger generation. It is the reason why many fathers are dying with their mantles. Because we do not know what weight is in the spirit. A man may pastor 10 members, but the weight that man carries in the spirit. There is something called a kingmaker anointing. Kingmakers never become kings, but they enthrone kings and dethrone kings. So be careful. There are people you see who may not have a semblance of certain results, but there is, there is a depth, there is a covenant they have with God. You would have called Anna the prophetess a failure. But it was her. She was one of the three prophets that spoke to Jesus and spoke over Jesus. And so when I saw him, I was in a hurry to honor him. When our father here, I do not know him. Please sit, sir. I almost feel embarrassed that he's standing. You see that? Apostle, do you have to do that? That's why you will not rise. That's why many young people will not rise. Because they wouldn't learn. Take what I'm saying seriously. You are here and you insult everyone. Once I am richer than you, have more crowds, I think I'm better. No, sir, it doesn't work that way. There are rankings in the spirit. Acknowledge it with comfort. Are we together now? Yes. When I stepped out of the hotel, the man of God, I'm just seeing him for the first time. He just greeted and we exchanged pleasantries and I acknowledged and honored him. Find comfort in knowing that if I grow or when I grow that grace that I covet some of you the people you now admire the truth is that your calling and your election is even greater than the grace you are envying but because you have not grown God will have to make do with the vessel available until you rise you are admiring prophets or apostles not knowing that you have been ordained to be a cutting edge apostle a cutting edge prophet but because you have not grown every scripture you quote is wrong come on go back and do your homework don't say God just anoint me anyhow be serious read books on church administration read books on leadership settle down pray and fast build character build your word content build genuine power and then the gates of the nations will be open so don't go around coveting people's listen don't covet a man's crown without coveting the cross that he died in is the cross that leads to the throne are we together how did i get here let's round up please sit down please sit down please sit down i'm trying to be as soft gentle and brotherly this morning so number one recognize and embrace your uniqueness and see it as a blessing just help two people i just saw light my god light light shama sabalika parodia sebati you are stepping into a level of grace we'll leave that for evening light as i just said this i saw light just like a flash of light light there's someone god is saying i should tell you that you have tarried long enough in this realm 
there is there there are dimensions you would have entered but offense and bitterness has stopped you god sent me to preach this message you are truly a man of god and there is grace upon you you are in the making but you tear down everybody tear down you admire them sincerely and covet what they carry but you fight them as a way of dealing with jealousy you will never get that get it that way god is speaking to you let let this teaching be a circumcision a cutting away of the old and to bring you into the new hallelujah preparing for the new please write this we have to finish i've given you three number four the fourth key to deal with envy is to submit yourself to prayer james 5 13. the spirit of envy is an affliction and the bible says is any man afflicted it says let him pray father this hurt and this hatred i have towards this preacher this woman this businesswoman it is demonic because the character of love is not that way you go back rather than arguing things around go and deal with it my god ah there's such an open heavens here i thought that this would leave this for evening but what is god doing now this afternoon you have fasted you have prayed hear what i'm saying you have fasted you have prayed this is a prophetic word for someone god is saying i should tell you deal with envy and deal with lust two things there is a man of god this is a prophetic word for you the lord is saying you have fasted and you have prayed but what is stopping you from entering the anointing of the new deal with envy and deal with lust these two things when you get them out of the way the mantle of your destiny will fall upon you. Write it down. Envy, lust. This is a prophetic word for a man of God. Deal with it. Deal with it. Submit yourself to prayer. You see, the greatest assignment of prayer that I know is for your growth and transformation. Reverend Julian, men can pray old carnal flesh sensual version of versions of themselves and pray i always give the example of a snake molting have you seen how reptiles molt they come out of their former self that's what prayer does luke 9 29 and as he prayed the fashion of his countenance was altered and his raiment became white and glistening you can pray yourself into a more spiritual version of yourself you can pray out jealousy pray out envy pray out you know backbiting pray out the desire to rejoice over the downfall of others when you find that cancer around shut down and go for a retreat why am i envying my sister why am I envying another man of God rather than celebrating? I hear the uh, good news that this is what God is doing with Reverend Julian. Why, why, what is this thing that is forming in my heart? You lock yourself in the place of prayer. Satan, you will not get a hold of me. Not this time. I'm a matured believer. Break out of that shell of flesh. Somebody say, I will pray. Shout it, say, I will pray. Romans chapter 10 and verse 12. I'll give you one more and then we're done. Romans 10, 12. The Bible says, For there is no difference between the Jew and the Greek, the South African, the Kenyan, the Nigerian, the Ghanaian, as far as accessing your inheritance is concerned, it says the same Lord, the same Lord who lifted Reverend Julian, the same Lord who lifted our father and our mother here in the Lord, the same Lord who has lifted every man of God here, the same Lord who has lifted every kingdom business in Kenya and across East Africa. He said the same Lord is rich unto all, not all that want him, all that 
call upon him father you have shown my brother kindness the same lord is rich unto all i pray by mercy that you make the same investment in my life and you pray and because of the purity of your heart god will grant it unto you someone say i will pray now you can go to james chapter 4 remember it says you have not because you ask you kill not knowing that the same thing is available in prayer you kill you look down on others the healing anointing that came upon one person is still available there are still more people who are sick who may never come to his crusade god is looking for more healing hands so why envy whereas you can go to god and say father these hands are available take them to the nations may they become extensions of your power and like jabez god will hear you and deposit a grace upon your life is someone learning pray for in your presence there is life everlasting i will reverence you lord there are two people who are going to begin to run now please hold them so they don't enjoy themselves there is a grace that is coming on two of them for in your presence there is life everlasting i will reverence you lord we'll have the time for impartation later on but Reverend Julian, I sense with all my heart that something God has placed upon your life. There are at least five people in this place that that grace, honestly, and I'm, I know that people shout under the anointing in church, but, but there are five, they've desired this investment of the spirit and truly it's in their call. It's not just a carnal, mundane desire. I don't know where the five are. But I pray for you. Apostolic exploits in the marketplace. Let that grace, by mercy, let it locate you right where you are. Let it locate you right where you are. Let it locate you. Let it give you a standing. Male and female, doesn't matter. The same Lord who called on his manservant and place oil upon his life according to psalms 89 20 and 21 i have found david my servant and he says with my holy oil i have anointed him i'm praying for you in the name of jesus that the grace that god has placed upon his servant may that grace rest upon you in the name of jesus please sit down let me give you the last key the last key that fights envy the final nail that buries envy in the life of anyone is to walk in love walk in love colossians chapter 3 walk in love sanima la kosia pradaskia colossians 3 14 and 15 this will be our final scripture in dealing with the spirit of envy above all these read the first four words please one two go one more time and above your praying above your fasting above your contending for growth above all this it says put on love kjv says charity but the word there is love and the bible calls it the bond of perfection it brings perfection to everything you have put on love put on love put on love when it has to do with love the only way you get it is by asking the Holy Spirit to pour it in you. The love of God was shared abroad in our hearts by the Holy Spirit. So when you find yourself walking in hate, bitterness, 
envy. You go to God in the place of prayer. Father, your love is not richly established in my life. Take away this spirit of hate. Let me be able to celebrate the victory. Let me celebrate your hand upon others and be comfortable with it. You see, love. Did you know that's the meaning of my name? What a good name. Selman means the way to love. Way to love. You never see me fight anybody's ministry. Fight anybody's. If I have a problem with you, I pray for you from a distance and wish you well. You see that? Never get yourself in a position where you become the reason for the pain of others. It is not noble. It is not noble. That a preacher is crying courtesy you and you sleep sound and wake up. That an individual is going down. You close the business door because of mismanagement of this spirit, this cancer. And it is amazing how many people will go behind and stab you, then call other people and say you are bleeding. Say, this man is bleeding. I mean, who would be so wicked to cause this man to bleed? And then they see the evidence of the blood on your own hands. Walking in love. I've seen God do more in my life because of love than because of prayer. I know you will not believe this. I'm a man of prayer by the grace of God. I'm a man of the word by the grace of God. But there are realms that even prayer warriors cannot get there. The Bible says no eye has seen. No ear has heard. Neither has it entered into the heart of man. The things that God has in store for lovers. This one is a realm of love. You can pray from a corrupt heart. You can fast from a corrupt heart. Envy can be the sponsor of your fasting because you want it to so that nobody disrespects you. Unfortunately, God vets the heart of men before he extends his hands to them. But when you have love that you wish everyone well, when you hear that this person's company has a problem, you wish them well. Even if they hate you, you wish them well and leave them in peace. You see, you have secured yourself most people become vulnerable to demonic attacks because they do not know the power of walking in love. I learned early that love never fails. Love never fails. Now, you will look like a fool while you are practicing love. Many people will take you for granted like they've taken many of you for granted. But can I tell you, at the end, love always wins. You know what killed death, defeated sin? It was not power, it was love. Even what power could not do, love did. There remained these three. Faith that moves mountains. Hope that maketh not ashamed. And love. The Bible says the greatest is love. When he was done talking about the gifts of the Spirit, Reverend Julian, he mentioned all the gifts of the Spirit in 1 Corinthians chapter 12. He said even with this... Let me show you a more excellent way. Then he goes to chapter 13. A more excellent way of preaching is to preach in love. A more excellent way of doing business is to do business in love. A more excellent way of counseling is to counsel in love. A more excellent way of rebuking is to rebuke in love. Once you take away the love factor, even if what you are doing is right, it becomes destroyed. Every time I come into this nation, I will celebrate every man of God that I have the opportunity to meet. Doesn't matter whether you are great, doesn't matter whether you are small. Once you are called in the name of the Lord and you are called to the service of the kingdom, I honor you. And even if you are not in ministry, the Bible says, honor all men. Then it says, honor the king. Honor all men. If I find someone sweeping in front of me, I will greet you with honor and respect. I still remember where he took me from. 
If I find you scrubbing the toilet for me to make the room conducive, you are deserving of my honor. You see that now? Men of God, listen. Let me challenge us. And I'll wrap up with this. There are many things that make me love your pastor. His passion for God, his diligence, that sense of innovation. But in my opinion, the greatest thing about Reverend Julian that has drawn me to him is the sincerity of his love. It's true. And I'm saying this sincerely. Hallelujah. I'll be saying this for the first time. His mom is here. I love the family. You would think I've, I've, I've told myself I'm one of the sons too. Mama did something the last time I came that touched me. Mama brought a pen last year. I still remember it's a golden pen. And this pen belonged to Reverend Julian's father. And after Mama hugged me and gave me a big kiss, she brought that pen as a gift and gave it to me. Thank you. Love. I will honor her in life and even the day she sees his face she still deserves my honor let me tell you this it is not always revelation and anointing that draws members your love life is a greater witness it brings beauty and authenticity to your person you can have all the revelation you have and people will hate you and if a generation hates you you will pay for it I tell you that in advance if a generation decides to hate you that you do not secure favor with them it's not always about manifestations and power and good preaching and business acumen sometimes it's about love the way you treat others the sincerity the authenticity of your person I spotted her while I was here and I, I, every time I come I receive my dose of the hug for the year so mama is going to give me my own hug for the year now I'm a man of God when I'm done I receive the hug of a son hallelujah and in that hug you see are many things virtue pouring from her heart a mother who can raise a son like this should hug you. I hope we are learning. When I honor our fathers, even the fathers in this land, it is because they have given us the opportunity to learn from their scars without experiencing their pain. They are deserving of our honor. Let me challenge you. Every young man in ministry here Anytime you see any elderly person, particularly in ministry, swallow your pride and honor them. I don't care what revelation you have. I don't care how many churches and parishes honor them. Let's restore honor. This is where both culture and spirituality meet. That honor, even to elders, is noble. My final words, envy is a killer. Envy is a cancer. Envy is a destroyer. But like I've taught you, use these keys. Fight it. Do not allow this conference finish. That unity in the spirit can never be attained with envy. I celebrate my friend and brother. He celebrates me genuinely. You see that now? Sincerely so. Sometimes he would just send me a lovely text and I say, oh dear, look at, look at, this man, he should be busy doing something else and now he's sending me a wonderful text. Can you be like that? Can people be comfortable when they see you? Can they share the good news of God's workings in their lives and not say they made a mistake telling it to you? Because your heart is so pungent that every time people tell you anything good, they regret it later on because there is a personality within you that fights everything God. God placed it upon his servant and he sent me here alongside all the great vessels who have shared and will be sharing in the course of this conference to charge you. You can pray. You can fast. You can study. You can be diligent. 
But if you do not deal with envy, it becomes a cancer that will become a mountain and it will stop you from going forward. Whilst you're seated, hold someone if you can as far as your hands can stretch, your left and your right. Let the healing process begin. Africa needs to be healed from envy. We have killed ourselves by ourselves. The businessmen in Africa did not die from others who came from other places. We need to repent. We have killed our prophets. We have killed our apostles. We have killed our missionaries. We have killed the finest. They didn't go to battle. They died at home. We kill them because of their dreams. We kill them because of envy. There are many pastors here who maybe are even discouraged. Where they thought they would get comfort, they were stabbed there. Where they thought they would find love. There are many homes today, when you hear that your brother is crying, you begin to rejoice. I told him, rather than feeling that pain, someone pray, Lord, we repent as a people. We repent as a continent. We repent as a nation. Kenya, you pray. Pray. It's time to deal with the spirit of envy. Please pray. You are speaking to yourself. You are the one that we praise. You are the one we adore. You give the healing and grace that our hearts always hunger for. Oh, our hearts always hunger. Wonderful, merciful, safe. Keep praying. Precious Redeemer and friend. Who would have thought that a lamb could rescue the souls of men? Oh, you rescue the soul. You are the one that we praise. You are the one we adore. You give the healing and grace that our hearts always hunger. Father, I receive the grace to love, to love my brother, to love my sister, to love my fellow man of God. We may not agree in everything doctrinally, but I still love. Our approach to ministry may be different, but I still love. There may be other character issues to correct in their lives, but I still love. I still love. I still love. You never win when you hate. You never win when you envy. You never win when you resent. Even if you are right, you will not win. Take this moment. I'm wrapping up. Let it be from the depth of your heart. You give the healing and grace that our hearts always hunger. Let me encourage everybody under the sound of my voice. I want you to invite everybody you can find in Kenya. Everybody. There are people, whilst listening to me now, you know they should hear this sermon. Please be sure that they do not miss the other sessions. I know some of you are not going anywhere. You are here, securing your seat. But call someone, some preacher, some business person. Tell them that God is dealing with issues here. Please be on your way and let the refiner's fire do the purging, do the inner working because it's time for greater glory. The Lord bless you and we'll see you in the evening. Thanks for watching Revival Time Hub. 
but be ye doers of the word, and not hearers only, deceiving your own selves, for if any be a hearer of the word, and not a doer, he is like unto a man beholding his natural face in a glass, for he beholdeth himself, and goeth his way, and straightway forgetteth what manner of man he was.